Uh, my name is Josiah Lewis. I used to work here um, at Beachmont. Can you guys hear me okay? Is it? Okay. Um, I'm pretty terrified um, to share with you guys. I, um, I've had a year to write this sermon, and believe it or not, I've only worked on it two days out of the 365 days. Um, to, to <laughs> Um, so, um, yeah, we're, it was an hour long and I had to edit it down to about 25 minutes. So we're all going to be experiencing a new sermon tonight. All right. So before we get to that, um, I just want to show a quick video. If you guys are ready to play that, um, should I just like hold the mic like this the entire time? So, okay, cool, cool. All right, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's horrible. Um, I just want to, I want to put the disclaimer out there uh, on behalf of Beachmont and me. We personally do not endorse doing this to anyone. Um, please don't go home to your cousins or your siblings and be like, oh, I can't see you. And then permanently traumatizing them. Uh, my siblings did this to me and I have eight of them. So like, it really wasn't funny. I thought, you know, something was wrong. All right. So I showed you that video. Um, to, to kind of illustrate a point, uh, my, the topic that I had was faith is not blind. Actually, can I just get the handheld mic? Because I, I feel like no one can hear me, and I don't want to do that. Is that okay? Okay, cool. Well, I can't hear myself fine, so. Check, check, check. Had to be particular tonight, huh? This is kind of awkward. What are you going up that way? Okay. Uh, okay. Whew. I'm so sorry. I'm, maybe I'm stalling. You don't even know. Uh, all right. So all that to say that she was blindly believing, right, blind faith that her family, who literally 10 minutes before probably was talking to her, they could see her. They could see Ava. Ava was there right? But she took the knowledge that all of a sudden they couldn't see, and she made that fact. She made that the, her belief. She put blind faith that no longer anyone could see her and like probably traumatized herself. Now, I'm not saying, again, don't do that to your siblings, but I am trying to prove a point that blind faith is having no knowledge and not being able to see. It's just coming up with whatever, kind of making it up in your head, and a, using that fear or whatever it is, that belief, and making that fact, and that is not what we're talking about, okay? Because I know, for me as a born skeptic, there's someone out there, I'm not gonna name you, you know who you are, but there's someone out there who's like, well, Josiah, there's no way that you can actually put faith in anything because inherently it's blind because when you have faith, it's, you're not seeing the end result. Exactly, that's what faith is. I'm gonna show you a practical example. Show of hands, and I can see y'all, so don't think I can't see you. How many people have played sports, All right? How many people have built something? How many people have made something? How many people have cooked something? All right. When you start that process, you can put your hands down. When you start that process, you have your eggs or whatever. If you're bacon, you have your milk, blah, blah, blah. If you're an athlete, right, there was a time. I know you're all strapping young men and, and you know, young ladies, young women. You guys are really strong now. But there was a time where you saw people that were my size and you were like, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to be that big. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to be that big. Uh, it's called human evolution and biology. Puberty. Shout out to the people going through it. That's like most of y'all. Anyways, so at some point, you were like, okay, 
I know this. My favorite athlete, they did this, 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 and this. Or if you like to cook, you're like, all right, if I do this, mix this with that, I'm going to put it in the oven or put it in the pan or whatever, and it's going to result in the product that I want, right? And so you took the facts, the science, whatever it was, and you were like, all right, cool. I'm going to put my faith in the process of that, right? And it's going to end up with the end result, okay? And that's the same thing that happens when you take your faith, you make it real, and you put it in Jesus, that was an actionable step for you. Now, can you guys throw up Hebrews 11.1? 1? We're going to talk um, just a little bit about that. All right, so now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Like I just explained, you didn't see the end result, but you know it's going to come, right? So faith is, at, faith is not blind. We're going to go through this definition because I really want you guys to know. Can you guys throw up the real for me? All right. So the definition of real faith, real, it's actually existing as a thing or occurring in fact. So not imagined or supposed. Like I said, blind faith, that's imagined or supposed. She imagined that no one could see her, therefore no one saw her, but that wasn't the case. All right, now let's move to faith. It's a complete trust or confidence in something or someone, right? And that's a, that's a tricky thing because in this day and age, there are so many things to believe in, but... We can all agree that we're all sitting on the ground right now, right? We have faith that we're sitting, and it's real to us, right? And if I were to step to the left, we all can trust our eyes that I move to the left. And, you know, I, wait, I guess it would be your right. But my left, okay? Um, <laughs> I really didn't do that on purpose. I know that was a joke, but, like, I'm up here flying by the seat of my pants. Anyways, so real faith is a complete trust that what you believe is the truth. The things, the processes that you're doing are the truth. And combined, these can prove the existence of things that you cannot see, all right? So let's dive in. John 9. I'm going to paraphrase this whole uh, chapter. It's 41 verses. I don't have the wherewithal to pay attention, and I'm not going to make you guys listen to me talk like this for five minutes straight. So what I'm going to do, I, I found this website called schmoop.com. Uh, you guys are laughing, but it's a real website. <laughs> okay. Oh, you guys know what it is? Oh, it's like the Spark Notes. I discovered it like last week. I was like, bro. Okay. So, man, I thought I was being hip. Oh, dude. Stuart, I'm old. All right, here we go. So, <laughs> here it goes, John 9. So the disciples were walking around, and they saw, uh, they were with Jesus, and they saw this man who was born blind, and back in the day, if you had, like, any type of deformity, it was like, oh, that guy was a born sinner. Like, some people are not born sinners, but that guy, he was blind, he had no control over it, so it's his fault. I don't get that. Anyways, so Jesus was like, what are you, what are you talking about? He's just blind. And the reason why he's blind, I'm about to show y'all. So they're like, okay, Jesus. Jesus spits on the ground, grabs mud, puts it on this guy's eyes, and he says, okay, I want you to go to the south side of the city, far away, uh, so everyone can see you got mud on your face, and then go wash it off, and you're going to be able to see. So the guy was like, all right. So he goes, washes his face. He can see. It's a miracle. So he's like, oh, I'm going to go get a job. I'm going to go do all these things. And his neighbors see him, which again, this like has always made me question. But it, if he was blind, how did he know he had neighbors? And again, like, where did he know where he lived? Anyways, so his neighbors are like, what happened? He's like, well, this guy named Jesus, he spit in the mud, put it on my face, and now I can see. And, you know, being normal people they were like he put mud on your face and now you're blind how do you know how do we know you're not lying she's like i promise but they're like mm, i don't believe so so they took him to the temple and they were like hey people who know a lot about god come check this man out he's doing like weird magic magic voodoo stuff and uh we're not, we don't like it so the religious authorities the pharisees that's what i call them and that's what they are in the bible they're like so can you tell us exactly what jesus did he's like okay he spit in the mud Put it on my face, and now I can see. And they're like, hmm, there's two schools of thought here. Uh, I'm quoting my friend Tim there. Um, so you're telling us either Jesus is the real man of God because literally no one else could do that, or you've been blind this whole time, which I'm like, why would you fake being blind for your whole life and like not have a job or be able to take care of yourself? Anyways, that's besides the point. So they're like, uh, I don't think so. 
They're like, we need to start talking to the Jesus dude. Um, he's starting to, you know, be real, real weird. The man's like, whoa, 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 don't come at him. He's a prophet. Like, y'all need to leave him alone. They're like, mm, actually, I think you're wrong. You weren't ever blind. You've been lying. We need to talk to your parents. So they're, the dude's like, okay, like, mom, can you come tell him that, like, I was born blind? She's like, yeah, he was born blind. And they asked his dad, he's like, yeah, he was born blind. And everyone's like, he was born blind. And the Pharisees are like, I just, I just, I, I, I don't buy it. I don't, I don't buy it. Um, and so at this point, he's getting fed up, the blind man that's no longer blind. And so they're like, do you think Jesus is a real person? And he's like, I don't know how many times I have to tell you, a man came up to me, spit in the mud, <laughs> And put it on my face. I'm starting to get tired of y'all. And so the Pharisees are like, well, this is why we keep asking you. Basically, this is what happened. We've seen Jesus, right? You haven't seen Jesus because you're blind. He's a dirty man. Dirty people just don't do that kind of thing. And he's like, well, I promise y'all, like, if he's not a prophet, like, he's obviously greater than anything that you guys are. And they're like, what? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. we perform sacrifices. Um, we also wear clean clothes. You can't do that because you're blind and you don't know how to wash clothes. So he's like, okay, why are y'all here? Like, why, why are you here? Get out. So they kick him out of the temple. Um, and Jesus hears about this and he's like, they kicking my fam out the crib for no reason? All right. Let me, let me go see what's up. Um, so he dippity doos on over there, and he's like, so I heard people was talking about me. And he's like, yeah, people are talking about you, Jesus. He's like, oh, word, what's up, what's up? And he's like, they, they just don't believe. And he's like, hmm. Well, I'll say this. Some people are born blind so that they can see, and some people can see, but they've been blind this whole time. And the Pharisees, mind you, they kicked Jesus out the temple. They kicked the guy at the temple. So if Jesus was talking about the temple, I don't know how they overheard this. This is called Hater 101. You know you have haters when they're like up in your business, like, what did, what did, what did you say? So this is what they did to Jesus. They were like, hey, he's over there. Should we, should we talk to him? I think he's talking about us. How, how, how do you know he's talking about us? Well, he looks like he's talking about us. Should we, should we talk? Okay, let's go. So they walk over to Jesus. They're like, um, so um, we've been uh, hearing um, you healed this guy. And he's like, yep. They're like, okay. Um, again, just to rephrase, you, you made him. He, he, he was born blind. He's a sinner, just like you. And he's like, yep. I'm not, I'm not a sinner, by the way. Jesus is saying that. I'm not a sinner. Yeah, he was a sinner, but now he can see. And they're like, okay, 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 cool, 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 cool. So, you're saying that if he's born blind, he can see, but people who can see are now blind. Are you calling us blind? And Jesus is like, I'm going to read this verse. I got it on my Bible app. If you have a Bible, you can pull it out. It's John 9, 39 through 41. I'm going to give you all a second to get there. That was one second. Okay. Jesus said, for judgment I came into this world that those who do not see may see and those who may see become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, are we also blind? And Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have had no guilt. But now that you say we see, saying, oh yeah, we can see how bad everyone else is, but they're not seeing their own sin, your guilt remains. All right. And the Pharisees were claiming that they had the means to see what was real and not in terms of genuine faith and practice. So they were saying, yes, we are the gods of our lives because we follow all the rules that God gave us. Uh, we look good. And, you know, we're obviously blameless because we have these jobs. But Jesus was trying to get them to see past themselves, which is the thing we often get stuck with. Um, in terms of proving anything, we're like, well, how do I know this is real? How do I know this is real? And you go through these questions in your head, and you're like, well, I do this, I did that, or they did this, and they did that. Therefore, it's real, and you leave out the Jesus in your faith. And I'm not saying we're all like, or I'm not saying I'm above reproach, because like yesterday I was, you know, sitting there like, Jesus, I don't know about that person. And I was, I don't remember where I was. I, oh, it was, um... 
McDonald's. I was in the driveway. And my girlfriend, she was like, <laughs> she told me, she was like, hey, just either someone yelling. I had seen the person, but I didn't want to admit it. But I was like, this crazy white lady's yelling at me, and I don't know why. She was, trying, she was really nice, although, uh, by the way. She was just trying to tell me they didn't take cash. Anyways. Um, <laughs> So, uh, again, yeah, we're all blind to our, our own things. We have, we have biases, we have things, but it really, really will come out when it comes to our faith in a practical way, okay? And with the Pharisees, it's easy to say, oh, I couldn't be a Pharisee, but I promise y'all, we are all Pharisees. Now, I'm not saying your faith is not genuine, but I am saying there is a group of people, maybe you know them, maybe you haven't experienced it yet, but there's a group of people in your life or maybe it's yourself and you're blind or you choose to be blind to not either see them, recognize them, or you choose to kind of put yourself and align yourself on one side of the aisle. And no, I'm not trying to get political or weird, so don't think that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just saying there are people that we are blind to. I'm going to get into um, a really, 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 really good practical Practical, practical knowledge that you can use. If you could put up the triple F system for me. Okay, so facts, faith, and feelings. This um, was one of the most impactful three words that, I've, that I had in my little tenure of being alive so far. So Joe kind of mentioned like, oh, I've lived life. And let me tell y'all, I have lived life. Um, there were... <laughs> I'm with you. Um, there, there was a time um, where I had to go away to a hospital for a while. There was some stuff that I couldn't resolve by myself and I needed help. Um, and I was questioning not only God, but my entire existence, uh, whether it was worth it. Um, and so in that, uh, my mom had brought me my Bible and I was sitting in the hospital angry and mad. Like, why did my mom bring me my Bible? I just wanted some cookies. Um, but inside the Bible, um, there were these notes. It was like chicken scratch. Um, and basically, it was this guy, Greg Dutcher. I don't know if anyone's heard of him. Can I get a woo? Yeah? Okay. So it was like three years before. All right. That's enough, Christ Fellowship. <laughs> Slow down there. Um, anyways, so in there was this chicken scratch that I had written literally three years before. So... I think at the time when I was in the hospital, I was 19, but I had written it when I was like 16. Yeah, that's the right math. Um, and it was facts before feelings. That's all I wrote, facts before feelings. And I was like, what does this mean? So I called my mom. She's like, actually, I, took a, I did a whole note thing on it, blah, blah, blah. And it's the triple F system. It's facts, faith, feelings. Oh, there you go. <laughs> hey, man, we're all enjoying this ride together. Um, okay, so you said what? <laughs> we're stalling. <laughs> okay, so again, facts, faith, feelings. And this sounds weird, but I promise you it's going to make sense in a minute. So let's go back to the very beginning of this sermon, right? To have faith, you have to have the knowledge, right? The knowledge of whatever it is you believe in. For this, being a Christian, you have to have the faith that, one, Jesus died on the cross and rose again to forgive our sins, right? Cleanses, up, cleanses us of all unrighteousness, right? So that's a fact, right? Another fact, all, most of the stuff that happened in Jesus' life was recorded in some level on some level in the Roman Empire. So I have real historical corroboration with the things in the Bible, which make this more concrete, therefore I can put faith in those facts, right? And with the faith in those facts, the feeling so, and I know this is going to be weird for some of y'all, I don't know if you guys have ever talked about it, but there should be a, a sense of at least love that comes when you have real genuine faith. And we're going to get to it in a minute, it's like, what if, I, what if I don't have that, what if I don't have those feelings, Josiah? We're going to get there, don't worry. But with that, you have the feelings, it's like, dang, Jesus, Jesus really did all that for me? He loves me that much? And from there, that's the feelings arise. And in that moment when I was in the hospital, those three words got me through. And every day I'm thankful for Greg, Greg Dutcher. He like low-key kind to save my life. Okay, so let's move on. 
So you have your facts, you have your faith, but what are you blind to, right? Are you blind to yourself or are you blind to others, right? In Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, it says, For grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not your own doing, it's a gift from God, not as a result of works so that no one may boast. How many people get to boast about that? No one. Say it again. No one gets to boast. So let's just put some actionable steps to this verse. Are you saved if you are nice to your brothers and sisters? Huh? Nah. Um, Are you a Christian if you decide to not cheat on a test? Right? Anyone can do that. Anyone can make that choice. It's not anything that we do, like this verse is saying. It's not anything that we do that makes us saved. It's putting our faith in Jesus' grace that he saved us so we can't take any of the credit. And for me, that personally was a very, very hard lesson because I'm a doer. I like to do things. When I show up to places, I do things. I'm not trying to brag or anything, but... Joe was like, he's such a great person, and that's true. But it's not, it's not because of anything that I've actually done. It's God's love and favor in my life, and it's kind of shown through. And I know there's at least 10 people in here that are like, yeah, Josiah's a great person, but that's all God. That's not him. Because if you know me in group 10, I did not do my job. Shout out to Emily Plack, because, uh, yeah. Anyone in group 10 knows I I didn't do my job. (laughs) So when it comes to being spiritually blind and we're asking about real faith is not blind, what does that mean for you guys? Are you blind to yourself in the sense of, yeah, God, I do all the right things, so I don't need to worry about my spirituality because my families they're all Christians. I'm basically a Christian. I don't have to worry about it. I don't know what everyone believes in, but for a long time, I was stuck there. You could also be one of those people that looks for outside confirmation. I forget the exact word, but it's one of those people that's like achieving things, doing things like me, where it's like, yeah, you do this, you do that. You're great. You need other people to confirm the faith that you have, which is weird if you think about it, because again, the only person that confirmed that is Jesus that can confirm that, is Jesus. So are you blind to yourself? And if you're not blind to yourself, if you're self-aware, are you blind to others? Um, And this gets dicey because sometimes you look out in the world and you're like, man, everybody's so messed up, but I'm not. And now there's anybody that I know, so we're cool. And you tend to start hanging out in just those circles, the cool circles that you deem are cool. And you start to ignore people that, could be your friend, but you're like, you know, Jesus, like, I just, I just don't feel like that's my calling. You know, I, there are people out here then you know, they're bad and I'm not bad. And I'm going to work on not being bad and not work on loving them. Um, but Jesus speaks in Matthew about giving up the things of this world. In Matthew five, he's talking to a rich man. He's like, you got to give up all your stuff. But for me, when I interpreted that, I was like, oh, it's a powerful thing because It's not just talking about your earthly possessions. It's all the earthly routines that we do. So this is a tough one when you and your family are out. um, And my dad, me and my dad, we have fights, but I'm going to get into a little bit. Um, Sorry, dad, if you see this. But for a long time, he would tell me about, you know, certain things like, Josiah, these people, they don't know any better. They're bad. Um, And it's not, we can't do anything to help them. Um, And it was one of those things I had to learn and grow. Jesus calls us to go see the people who can't see, just like that blind man. Jesus calls us to go see those who otherwise wouldn't hear about him. Those are the things that we have to do as Christians. So is your faith blinding you kind of from doing those things, or is it real? Is Jesus opening your eyes to see the whole spectrum, right? Right. Are you in blind to those who are you blind to those who can't speak up for themselves? And that could be in school, that could be in your family, that could be just random people you know. If you see an injustice going on, and I know that's a you know a high, what's it called? Trigger word. I don't mean to do that. But 
Jesus calls us to see everyone. And just like those Pharisees, are you being a Pharisee in the, in the moment and saying, well, like, he was bad and he continues to be bad. So I'm going to just leave him there and, you know, he's wrong. Even if he takes Jesus into his life, he's wrong. I, want, for one, have suffered from that. I have seen Jesus transform people and I was the one that was like, I, I don't buy it. You're still, a, you're still a loser in my eyes. So are you one of those people? Ask yourself that. And again, we're coming back to it. Are you blind to yourself? Are you one of those people that's like, well, I don't have any feelings about Jesus. I don't have what I see as faith to everyone else. I don't really have any of that. I don't have, you know, a real walk with Jesus or anything. So why in the world would I believe in Jesus if I don't have those things? And maybe that's why you're here tonight. Maybe that's why... I'm here tonight to tell you, hey, come to the table. Um, hopefully, I, that was super clear. If not, um, we're going to go through some takeaways. This is one of my mom's, one of my mom's favorite things. All right, so number one, everyone hold on number one. All right, real faith is not blind. Say it with me. Real faith is not blind. All right, and so are you blind too? Yourself, others, and again, your own walk. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you do. But Jesus, um, in John 3.16, or John writes, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Um, And when you put your real faith and you believe in Jesus, you won't perish. I'm not saying everything's going to be perfect because I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. But when you take those actionable steps, uh, believe in Jesus, um, the faith will come and the feelings will come. I'm going to pray. I know that was a really quick one, but I don't like to talk long. Um, maybe, it wasn't that, maybe it was long and like, you guys want me to shut up. Anyways, I'm going to pray. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, thank you, God, uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, bow your heads. Uh, Father God, uh, and the band can come up as well. Uh, Father God, I thank you for tonight. Um, thank you for giving me a platform to share uh, just a little bit about how much you love these kids, um, how much you care for them. God, let this be the spark for at least one person here um, to take their faith and to make it actionable, to let it not be blind. Um, to not just, whether it be being blind to the, their own walk or, you know, the things around them, God, let them be able to see like the blind man in the story. Um, fill them with your love, with your kindness and the reassurance um, that their faith is not misplaced in you. Let them believe in the facts um, of your existence and your power. Um, I pray for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you guys, um, are you going to do it? it Don't clap. If you are one of those people who feel like tonight is the night you want to make your faith more real, to not be blind, um, and you know, you know, I can't tell you, you know if you want to make that step. It's okay if you don't, but if you know you're feeling that tonight, come talk to a staff member. They'll be in the back. I'll be in the back. Um, We can talk to you, um, pray for you, and help you give steps um, in order to make your faith uh, more real. Thank you, guys. Can we thank Josiah one more time? You know, in just a moment, we're going we're gonna to enter back into worship, but I, I do want to take a moment to just ask, where are you tonight? Like, have you seriously considered your relationship with God? And are you blind to who he is? How, just like Josiah was sharing, are you so self-absorbed about what's going on in your own life that maybe you've never considered who God is and what does it mean to trust him? to have full confidence in him. 
If that is you tonight, I want to encourage you to just head over there and talk with a staff member as we sing this song. And as we're singing this song, we're going to be singing Waymaker, that he is the one that makes a way. He's the one that opens eyes, just like Jesus did with the blind man. So let's go ahead and stand. If you'd like to go get prayer, please go over and see someone and pray with them while we sing this song.